Beloved, thanks be to God for this chance that we have to be together yet again. Thanks be to God for this morning that we can gather and worship the one who has called us into being and even called us into this virtual sacred space. Thanks be to God that we have come through many dangers seen and unseen unto this moment. And now we have the chance to spend some time together. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For God is good and God's mercy endures forever. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you You are Lord. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. to spend a moment in John's gospel in the 12th chapter. And this is in between the end of Jesus' public ministry and before the washing of the disciples' feet. This is after Lazarus has been raised, and resurrected. And, and after he, Jesus has gone to Bethany to, to dine with Martha and Mary and all of the people at the house where the three of them live, this is after that interchange. This is after the, 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 the opening of this oil that, 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 that was lavished on Jesus. This is, this is uh, after Jesus has toured the countryside with the disciples. This is after there have been so many 
uh, uh, operating um, uh, 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 showings of miracles and, and of sermons and of lessons and, and of discussions. This is after there have been all of these different things and the time is drawing nigh that Jesus is going to leave these folk. Jesus comes back together with some after he has walked away and been hidden from the crowd in verse 36. And he's back together with some folk and, and, and after these things, Jesus went away and was hidden from them. And in verse 37 it says, but despite all the miraculous signs Jesus had done, most of the people still did not believe in him. This is exactly what Isaiah the prophet had predicted. Lord, who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? But the people couldn't believe, for as Isaiah also said, the Lord has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts so that their eyes cannot see and their hearts cannot understand and they cannot turn to me and have me heal them. Verse 42 says, many people did believe in him, however, including some of the Jewish leaders, but they wouldn't admit it for the fear that the Pharisees would expel them from the synagogue, for they loved human praise more than the praise of God. And Jesus shouted to the crowds. I find it interesting, he didn't say it, he shouted to the crowds. If you trust me, you are trusting not only me, but also God who sent me. For when you see me, you are seeing the one who sent me. I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. I will not judge those who hear me, but don't obey me. For I have come to save the world and not to judge it. But all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. I don't speak on my own authority. The Father who has sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it. And I know his commands lead to eternal life. So I say whatever the Father tells me to say. But all who reject my message and my message, me, who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. There's an awful lot in that text. I invite you to read that on your own. But I wanted to talk for a few moments on the notion of message received. Message received. Remember verse 48, but all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. A message has been sent. Now that the end of the public ministry has occurred, right? now that Jesus has said all the different things Jesus is going to say to the people, oh, there will be some utterance from the cross. There will be some utterance from the cross. And there will be some discussion after the resurrection. But Jesus has told a lot of the people the things that Jesus wanted them to know. Jesus brought a message to the people. Here, here in John, Jesus brings a message and tells the folk, you got to love somebody. You got to love. There's a commandment to love. There is a, a, a notion that you have to love and you've got to care and you've got to have this, this thought. There's a message that's been sent. And, you know, as we drive around and sometimes you'll hear the phrase and we're about to enter the Advent and then the Christmas season, we have a little runway before we get to Christmas. But uh, as we end up in that place, folks will, 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 will offer us these, uh, um, these rhyming or rather these, these, these simple statements that really aim at our hearts in terms of what we're focused on. Jesus is the reason for the season. You'll hear that. You hear that, you hear it over and over and over again. But why? What is the message? We, we can look at Jesus as an object 
and say this is what Jesus is and this is what Jesus does and sit Jesus down when we get ready and keep on moving. But there's a message that Jesus has come, not just a hypothetical object for us to focus some attention on when we get ready. Jesus has said some things to us that we need to remember. Jesus has provided something to us that we need to hold on to. And if we cannot do that, Are we rejecting the fulsome message and the messenger? What is it that Jesus is saying to us? What is it that Jesus has said to us? What is it that Jesus has been spending all this time? What is it that God Jesus killed? The message is what God Jesus killed saying the things that Jesus has said and doing it in the ways that Jesus has done it. The message has gotten the messenger in hot water with, the, with those who were in authority because he was subverting their authority. It wasn't simply that he was to die on the cross. There was a reason. There was a reason. And just like we look to God as the redeemer, that God has redeemed us even in those terrible acts on that day on Calvary. God has still found a way to redeem us. But we have to go back and focus on whether or not we've received the message. Do we care about somebody? If I leave Jesus as an object, I don't have to worry about Jesus. what Jesus has said. If I can pull Jesus down off the shelf when I get ready for Jesus, I don't have to think about what Jesus is trying to tell us through the, through the, the time on the countryside, through the, through, the, through the times when he dealt with folks, through the going to places and dealing with unclean people and unclean things, through the caring about somebody who, had, who came from a different place. If we don't focus in on those things that Jesus has told us and shown us through the sermon Jesus preached through his actions, are we then in a place where we might miss the messenger and the message and not receive that which was thrown to us? What is the consequence of missing the message and the messenger? Jesus said that he's not going to judge everybody. The truth he has spoken is going to judge folks, which might lead us to the point where we say, I need to make sure I'm solid on this truth. I'm not telling you to be concerned about where your soul is going to spend eternity. I believe that you believe on Jesus. You believe in the one who has come, who has redeemed, who was hung high and stretched wide and was crucified for our benefit, who was made, who, who, who died, who went to hell and ravaged the place and came up and was resurrected on that Sunday morning with all power in his hand. I, I'm not concerned about that, but we still need to make sure that the truth of the message is known and the truth of the message hasn't even yet been that he was going to die on the cross. They, he, he's, he's indicated that, but they haven't seen that yet. When we get into verse 46 and 47 and 48, Jesus is still alive on the first life. He didn't get the second life. Right? He, he didn't, this is not the resurrected body Jesus. This is the one that came from Mary. This is the one that was born in Bethlehem. This is the one who was, who was wrapped in swaddling clothes. This is the one that the, the wise men, the magi came to, 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 to find and to pay honor to and to give gifts. This is the one who has yet to make his way to Jerusalem's, uh, to Golgotha's hill. This is a truth that we need to make sure. I'm telling you, church, we need to make sure that the message is communicated so that more of us can say that the message has been received. I, I, was, I was thinking uh, this week that uh, uh, how do you trust Jesus if you're not even focusing on the message that Jesus provided? Where is the trust? What is it that we're trusting in? What is it we're trusting on? 
We've got to receive the message, oh yes, the redemption message. We've got to receive the message, oh yes, he came from, from, from God. God enfleshed God's self and came into our space. That's why we had this word Emmanuel, which means God with us. Yes, that is the truth, but how, how now? Uh, what else is there for us to say? Jesus wasn't born on Palm Sunday, make his way into uh, Jerusalem and was crucified on Good Friday and raised on that Easter Sunday morning. There's more to the story. There's some truth that we need to make sure that we have. I believe, I believe, I believe, as, 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 as a, a, a pastor came last week, uh, Reverend Crompton, and she preached a wonderful word last week on our Women's Day, uh, you know, and talked about Paul's message to the Thessalonians, at least the first one, and then also talked to us about the fact that we have to rejoice always and we have to uh, 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 pray without ceasing and then we also have to uh, give thanks in all things. And I said uh, afterwards, that's something that helps us to live a life. You can, you can live with that. You can sink your teeth into that. The love ethic that Jesus talks about, that you need to love somebody, the, the caring that Jesus is talking about in terms of being one who stands up, because if you can't love your neighbor, how in the world can you even claim to love God? Here is what Jesus is talking about, and that truth, that truth helps us to live a life. How can you live in this world and you don't have that? I was fortunate enough to have lunch with another pastor, somebody you know, and we were sitting at a diner not too far from here, and, and, and she told me, she said, the faith is a communal faith. It's one that is known and lived and worshipped in community. We're here today, a faith community. You could be here by yourself, and if you walked in here and was the only one, it was just me and you here in this church, you might get a little discouraged. But we are here together with a group of people. And it could be two, it could be three, and Jesus is right here in the midst of us, right? We've talked about that. But there is also the opportunity to, to be in this community, to lean on each other, to show love and caring to each other, to help one another, to learn from one another. There is something for us in this communal faith that Jesus has led us to. And one of the things that, lit, that, that I thought about was the fact that My daughter turned 14 yesterday, and my goddaughter turned 18. One turns 18 tomorrow, and one turned 18 last week. And I went to uh, 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 my goddaughter's house, and her parents were telling a story to me, and we had all gone to one of those conventions. You ever go to a convention at one of the, the, like the state convention center? And it was a conference of Valor. It wasn't a conference. It was an expo. It was an expo, and it was like a Lego expo. And there was all sorts of Lego folk there. And, and, and there was a guy who was in a little Lego costume. You know, the Lego men, they, they don't have hands. They got the, you know. They got this thing you can just grab. You, you, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you, you know, yeah, yeah. Olivia knows what I'm talking about. Folk with ch kids, you know, you, you know, uh, recent, recent kids, kids. She got kids. She got uh, children. Uh, but you know, when you you have this little Lego thing, and he put his hand behind my head, and we we're taking a picture like it was a little, like he was putting, you know. And and I'm holding my daughter, and I've got my goddaughter uh, by the hand, and we're taking a picture together, and it made me think about the Lego. And you put one Lego together with another Lego and another Lego and another Lego and another Lego and you can have uh, something that looks like something. You can make uh, uh, spaceships and you can make a uh, little um, uh, ambulance station. You can make police cars. You can make a little community, but it takes one little piece and connected to another little piece, connected to another little piece. And you know what? I, you know you remember those days when the kids might not put all the Legos away and they leave one or two of them on the floor and you step on them with a, a bare foot. There's no pain like a pain of feeling a Lego go in your foot with all of your weight on it. Lord have mercy. That's just that one Lego. But you know what? If you you stepped on a, on a police car, it might not hurt as much. 
uh, uh, when you put these things together and you make something of this, they're stronger, they can, they can last, they have purpose, they have beauty, they have joy. There's a purpose of all of this. There's joy for having created it and for having followed the directions. And we are like Lego pieces. Because we have received a message from Jesus. And the lesson, the message is that we are a community and you got to care for one another. You got to tell the truth to one another. You got to be good to one another. You've got to follow an ethic, a way of being, you knowing what is right and what is good and doing these things amongst one another. And you know when the message has been received because if the goal was to put together a beautiful church with Lego pieces, you have the church fit together. And maybe you can't always see the beauty of the church by looking at it. You can see the beauty of the Lego church by looking at it. Oh, it's all set up and everything is where it needs to be and it doesn't look strange and the spire is not sticking out of the side. It's sticking up, going up to God. And when you're looking at a church, we are nothing but Lego pieces. And if you stood outside, oh, our building is okay looking building and, you know, our grounds are in shape right now, but you can't tell the beauty of it by looking at it. The beauty of this church is known by having your heart feel that within the people and to, to know the things. And we know that you have been this properly produced Lego church if we are showing that we have received the message. We are, have received the truth. We are living according to the ways that, and it's very simple. It's very simple. The message that Jesus provides is not a difficult message to understand. It's a difficult message to live sometimes, to live right, to do right, to care about folk, to be the same person when you're away and when you're with people, when you're by yourself and when you're in a crowd. It takes a lot to be able to do these things, and God in Christ Jesus will help us. But the thing is, we've got to receive. got to be looking for it. Now here's the next step. Can you tell somebody what the message is? Can you articulate what the message is? Oh yes, 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 Jesus will save your soul. Oh yes, 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 you will have home uh, beyond the river. Oh yes, 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 we have salvation. But can you tell somebody something that helps them to live their life in Jesus to say you've got to love somebody as hard as it is, you've got to still care. As hard as it is, you've got to still show. As hard as it is, you've got to still have character. As hard as it is, you've still got to be the same person. As hard as it is, you've still got to say the thing that's the right thing. As hard as it is, you've got to follow where God is leading. As hard as it is, you've got to live in these ways. And if we can do that, we are demonstrating that we deserve to be fit into place. There is a place for us. You look out into the world, folk lie in each other as easy as they're breathing. You look out into the world, and folk are showing each other how cold and how hard they could be to each other. I can out, I can out, uh, 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 be, I can be more cold to you than you can be to me. I can be more cruel to you than you can be to me. I can be cruel to you before you have the chance to be cruel to me. There are people that live their lives this way. There are people that live their lives this way. They can find ways to tear down folk. They can then, they can find ways to tear down folk and, folk and put Jesus' name on it. They can find ways to tear down folk and say this is what God would want for us. They can find ways to do this. But our goal, our goal is to take this message Receive it, live into it in our hearts, and build something. This, this on the liturgical calendar is the reign of Christ Sunday. This, this is an opportunity for us to remember and recall that we are following after a Jesus that is powerful and that has power. But we need to make sure that we are putting our little power in Jesus' hand and saying, I want to be part of what it is that you're doing. You're doing the thing. You're leading the thing. You're running the thing. I want to be part of it. Help me, God, to have part and parcel in my life. 
Help me, God, to share this message. Is it, worth, is it a worthy message? Is the Jesus message a worthy message? Is it helping you to live your life? Is, is it helping you to, to make it in the world? Oh, you don't have to live the way Jesus has said. You can do it another way, and you might live quite well. There's plenty of people doing it. Some of the richest people in the world are living their best life not following what Jesus has talked about. Now, it has eternal consequences. And you can do this for so long, and then God shows that God is still in charge. But for us, have we received the message? Can we send it to somebody else? Can we share it with somebody else? Can we live it so somebody else says, I don't know what it is they're doing, but I want to know what they know. I don't know why it is they feel like they always have to do the right thing. Tell me, why is it that you live the way you live? Tell me why is it that you love the way you love? Tell me why you can be so kind to people even when they are not kind to you. Tell me why you can care about somebody. Tell me what it is that guides you. Folk out here lost, they don't know which way to go. What is it that guides you? How do you know how the, what the right thing is? Oh, we make mistakes. Don't use this sermon against me when I make a mistake and you've got to come to me and say, Pastor, now that was hurtful to me. Because it just might happen one day that I do something that you were not pleased with and say, this is not how Jesus might want us to be. I've apologized in my life before. And I imagine I'm going to have to apologize in my life going forward. But so will you. It's not just on this side of the pulpit, it's over there too. But have you received the message? And are you able to relay it to somebody else? This is what God wants us to do. And as we sit here now, as, our, uh, as we open the door to our church, and as we consider uh, uh, Jesus and what Jesus is saying to us right now, as we think about how we can grow closer, I, I feel that everybody, I'm, I'm, you know, having known and walked with you a little bit, I, you probably have already said yes to Jesus. Some of y'all have already had a stop back here at the bas baptismal pool. It might have been this one, but we offer opportunity now for somebody who's looking to find the one who has provided this truth. Whosoever will, let them come. Maybe it is for you to, to just grow a little closer, to come along a little closer to what God is trying to say. Say, I've got another mission for you. I've got another place for you to go, and I want you to do this. It's time for you to do a different work now. Here is our opportunity. Whosoever will. Friends, we invite you now to worship God through the giving of your gifts. Our ministry requires resources to make the changes in the physical house in which we worship, to help somebody who doesn't have enough to live with more dignity, to send some resources across the water so someone in another context can know that there are faithful believers in Jesus Christ who care about them sight unseen. Here now is our opportunity to support these initiatives and to give to this house at Bethlehem and we are thankful for what God is doing with you and through you in this moment. Won't you give? And there are a number of ways for you to contribute Either, either through the mail at our mailing address, which is on your screen, or even perhaps you might go to our website, BethlehemNewark.org, to the donate page. And there you will find the link to Givelify, which enables your online giving. 
or we invite you to come to the sanctuary where you may worship with us in spirit and in truth here in our physical house and you may leave a gift here in the sanctuary whichever way you choose to give we are most grateful for what god is doing in this moment in your life and in your worship of god through your obedience in sharing your resources god bless you beloved and please help us to move forward Friends, we're grateful that God has offered us this time to come together and to worship. And we are hoping that we will have another chance to do this again. And you are invited to come and worship with us in person in the sanctuary next Sunday, 11 a.m. Please join us or find us on our website, BethlehemNewark.org. Go to the worship page where you can find this and so many other sermons and Bible studies. But until we have the opportunity to worship together one with another, please receive this benediction. And now unto the one who is able to keep us from falling and who presents us faultless before God's glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and evermore. And the people of God said, Amen. Go in peace, beloved. May the peace of God go with you. Lord, my soul desires you. Nothing else will ever do. There's no greater name. Christ, you stay.